Versal just launched a bunch of new storage features that can make your life much easier when building full stack applications. In this video, let's see what those features are and I will also share my thoughts on them. So here I have opened the Versal's announcement blog post. I will leave a link in the description for this too. Uh, but the first feature I want to talk about is Versal KB. And it's a key value store like Redis, and it's actually Redis compatible. Some of the features of Versal KV are that it is serverless, and it can be written to and read from Versal's Edge network. So it can be run on the Edge, which should make it very fast. Another interesting thing about Versal KV is that it persists data in memory and on disk by default. So what this means is that even if the server crashes, you won't lose your data. I haven't tried this out yet, but based on the code example over here, uh, looks like it's pretty easy and straightforward to use. Looks like we just first import the KV from Versal KV, and then we can use it like any other Redis database like this. Interesting stuff. The second feature Versal launched earlier this week is Versal Postgres. So Versal now also offers a serverless Postgres database solution. And it should work very well with the new Next.js app router and React server components but also with frameworks like Nuxt or SvelteKit. And we can use Versal Postgres to query, insert, update or delete data directly inside of our React server components. And this will of course help us, for example, with the amount of client-side JavaScript that we need to generate. Looking at the code example over here, uh, as the Versal KV looks like it's pretty easy and straightforward to use. So we first import the SQL from Versal Postgres, and then we can use it to do our SQL query and also return some data from the database. Again, interesting stuff. The third feature Versal launched is Versal Blob. And it is a storage solution that you can use to store files that you would normally store in a place like Amazon S3, for example. And it can be accessed from the edge through a storage API that is built on top of web standards. So there is no need for configuring buckets or implementing heavy SDKs. So you can basically use it as you would any other REST API. Looking at the code example over here, again, looks like it's pretty easy to use. So we need to import the pot from Versal blob, and then we can use that to uh, post our files. So here looks like we are defining where we want to store the file, and then the actual file, and then also uh, set if it's uh, public or private, for example. I think all of these three features are really interesting and I'm looking forward to trying them out. And uh, the Versal KV and Versal Postgres can both be used right now, but the Versal Blob is still in beta and you need to sign up for a waiting list in order to try it out. But yeah, I'm definitely going to test out the Postgres and KV uh, pretty soon. As I said, these were just launched earlier this week because Versal is having this launch week this week when they are launching one new feature or new features every day of the week. So looking forward to the rest of the week. Let's see what they have in store for us. But I think it's great that Versal has added these uh, storage options to their platform. And from the looks of it, they seem super easy and straightforward to use. I'm not saying that it has been super hard to use, for example, Upstash for Redis database before. But if you are hosting your application in Versal anyways, I think just having one less tool or service to use is a nice option to choose from. And I think these storage options will also 
uh, improve the ease of use of Vercel. Uh, not to say that it's hard to use now, because I think the ease of use is probably one of the key benefits that you get when you host your application with Vercel. But I would love to hear what are your thoughts about these new storage options that Vercel launched. Uh, are you, for example, going to test out the Vercel KV or Postgres in your next project? Please let me know down in the comments. And if you're not already, please do hit the subscribe button also. And I'll see you in the next video.